Burnout isn't what it used to be. Psychologically speaking, the old definition of burnout is working too many hours at a certain type of task in a way which leads to emotional depletion and fatigue. But that's not what we're suffering from collectively these days. Collectively speaking, we've got a scattered mind. We're doing too many things at once, we've got too many inputs and not enough outputs which go far enough. There's an email over here, there's a text message over there, there's half of a project and a, an idea over here, but nothing really continues all the way to the end point. It's not like the old jobs that we used to have where we'd work long days doing a series of more or less predictable tasks. We're in a very complex and highly evolved work culture, some would say, but also we're in a very moronic and overly stupefied culture where we've got too many loud noises and notifications and distractions and vibrations which are pulling our attention in one way or another so burnout has shifted if you're scattered in your focus and you feel like you've lost your ability to pay attention to any particular work task for more than an hour or two this is a video that i want you to consider i'm going to give you a practical framework in the second half of the video I'm going to walk you through how i segment my work weeks and my work days to be able to stay on track and stay focused but you can forget all of that unless you have a deeper existential answer to the reason of well the question more importantly of why work and why care about yourself if you don't have boundaries in place you won't be able to work effectively and if you don't have a reason to set the boundaries in place because you don't care about yourself at a deeper existential level you won't follow through on your ambitions and passions to be a creative or an entrepreneur or someone who is getting ahead and getting along on your career path so let's break this down into two questions based on today's question from one of my viewers who said that dealing with feeling burnt out at the moment as we described but not because i work too much but because my energy and attention is all over the place in order to be successful in my entrepreneurial journey i need to grow up and father my business and then any tips for setting up structure as a creative a video on the conflict between structure and freedom would be amazing i'm very happy to answer this question because philosophically it's one of the most important questions of all how do you guide yourself down a path that you want to take and avoid the distractions and diversions the detours and the dead ends first question i want you to ask yourself why work in the first place not superficially not the simplistic i need money to be able to live i understand that and that can be a very compelling reason but for this video i want you to really look at your life as a whole I want you to consider the decades of life ahead and if you're a creative or you're an entrepreneur or someone who has more of a let's call it soul-led career path where you're trying to do something which is a bit out of the ordinary you need to have a deep reason to want to work you need to have something which doesn't necessarily get you out of bed in the morning and doesn't necessarily keep you up at night because you're consumed in the difficulty of the great challenges that you're taking on for behalf of the people in need it doesn't have to be a massively humanitarian reason but you have to choose life and you have to choose a life where work is a necessary and arguably one of the most important aspects of your life if your entrepreneurial path doesn't excite you and doesn't feel meaningful there's no real motivation to stay on the path in the first place and this seems like a stupidly simple almost overly reductionistic philosophical framework to kick off this video but it's obvious if you've set out the path and this path could be i'm an artist who's starting out and i want to get to my first gallery and then i want to have a photo book and then i want to be a figure who's renowned in the space or i'm an entrepreneur who has a new idea for a certain technology startup and we need to take it through these stages to get to the end result of community impact or there's somebody who has an education institution a humanitarian institution a charity whatever it might be there are certain paths that you need to go down but if you don't see the years and the decades ahead and you're not committed to walking through that process because fundamentally you don't care about the journey ahead at some level some part of you some psychological fragment doesn't want to be involved or participate and exert all of that energy you won't walk the path you will take that first opportunity to take a detour you will take a diversion you will do all of these ancillary things that don't really push your business forwards for example networking you're a creative individual who spends all your time messaging people on social media and setting up podcast interviews with someone else who's got 100 views on their podcast so you can feel like you're the identity of a creative but the reality is you're not actually creating because you haven't got a creative work routine you haven't got a structure for your creativity 
All of those things are feel-good diversions. You don't have a deep enough reason to actually work, not to take on the identity in a grandiose or almost ego-infused bypass from the difficulty of building a career. You will get stuck. You'll get stuck. Some questions for you to really consider is why work in the first place and what kind of work do you need to do to be able to be in this for the long run. You can get a variety of jobs that pay you enough money to be able to get by and pay your rent and pay for food, but if you're watching my videos and you like what I do here, I imagine you'll be on that stage of just doing work to get by. Or at least if you're there practically right now, you don't want to be here in five years time. You want to be doing something more meaningful. So know your answer to the question of why work. Have a deep reason, almost a spiritual reason is something that I could suggest. You need to have some kind of philosophy, some kind of story that you buy into where you situate yourself in the world and you belong on this path of progress. And once the belongingness aspect is there, once you have a reason to continue down the path, we can then talk about putting up the guide rails and of ignoring the diversions and distractions. That's all secondary. That's all the practical things. I don't want to get into it at the beginning because you need to commit yourself to the path in the first place. If you're not committed, I can't answer um, in a single generalized video why you might not be committed, but usually speaking, it's because you've been given a story by one of your parents that you're trying to follow through on. It's being given a societal story that you're trying to follow through on, or otherwise you're actually lying to yourself in one way or another about what you need to be creatively, spiritually, financially, or relationally fulfilled in one way or another. That's the philosophical framework to begin with. The second philosophical framework that I need you to consider is why bother with boundaries. A boundary is a wall, a structure, a force field, some kind of you shall not pass and I shall not put out, some kind of force field, some kind of structure which limits inflow and outflow. And if you don't care about yourself, you will not put up a boundary. We wear clothing on our skin because we care about ourselves to protect ourselves. We put a border around a country to define the country and also, historically speaking, to protect against those that would take from the people of the country. It's not outdated politics and the whole world should all be together. There's real reasons for borders. There's a reason why a home or a property has a fence and a boundary so you know where you end and where the neighbour begins. There's very good reason to have a border, very good reason to have a boundary, and even the boundary of your skin helps you to decide where you end and where the person sitting next to you on the train begins. Very good reasons to have a boundary, but if you don't care about yourself, you won't actually establish those boundaries energetically around yourself in the first place. What I mean by this is that you can have an incredible structure, you can have a wonderfully segmented work routine, but you won't follow through on enacting that routine if you don't love and care and respect yourself enough to put out a boundary that would manage your outflow and limit your inflow. Hopefully that makes sense. You need to have a border around your career property. You need to have the country of you with stable territory around the edges so that you have all the room to be able to work and grow and expand and build out your empire in one way or another and playing around with the metaphors. Have a reason to work and have a reason to build the boundaries. If the boundaries aren't being built and they're not being maintained, it's usually because there is a deeper part inside of you, some younger part perhaps who doesn't believe that they're worth caring about, and you can do the self-love and self-compassion and self-respect work to be able to look at that particular issue and then find hopefully some sort of practical solution. But the practical solution, again, will not last the test of multiple months and multiple years if you don't have a reason to stay on the path and you don't have a reason to put the boundaries around the path to stop you going on other paths. Because otherwise, give an example off the top of my head, you'll get six months into your creative career, six months into an entrepreneurial venture, and you encounter a few roadblocks on that journey. And rather than making the energy to go over the roadblock or to find a way through the roadblock, you just go off the path and try and sit try and choose something different. And that happens to most people most of the time throughout their 20s and their 30s when they're not committed to the long run, but also they don't fully believe in their own capacity to be able to make the long run work. Deep self-conviction, deep self-belief. You can do this if you stay on the path, but you also need to love yourself enough to replace your shoes when they're worn down, to be able to nourish yourself with the right kinds of food and water, 
and just maintain a steady rest routine, but that all depends on you not hating yourself or having negative toxic self-talk, which either meets that barrier and then collapses and gives up and goes away, or artificially rams through the barriers too quickly and then you become exhausted. There's many different configurations to consider. Philosophically, that's the first half of my answer. How do you develop a structure and a routine which has freedom and creativity, but also a reliable path of progression? You need to philosophically answer those two questions. Why am I doing this? And am I worth this? I'll say that again. Why am I doing this? And am I really worth this? If you feel the conviction and you want to continue, this next half of the video will be easy to apply. We'll move into the practical solution, which is about segmentation. My most practical advice in regards to actually structuring an entrepreneurial or creative work week, and that is to create firm boundaries within your work week, within the months of your year, and ideally within the days of your week, if possible. For me personally, at this stage in my business ventures, I split my week in half. I go online on social media for the second half of the week, and I stay offline for the first half of the week. The second half of my week is focused towards people. The first half of my week is focused towards creating new material. Filming this YouTube video, this video is filmed in a different energy compared to the energy of when I'm talking to people and relating to people in either my client mentorships or on social media more broadly. Segmentation is key. The reason that segmentation is something that I really want you to focus on is if you can narrow your consciousness to certain types of tasks, you will prevent this common burnout of doing too much in a single day. It's not that you're doing too much at once. It's that you're doing too many different things in a single 24 hour period. You can have half a dozen different lanes of your business, all active in the air at once, like juggling balls that you're trying to manage as an entrepreneur you, that you are if you balance them out over the seven days. Probably best for me to teach via example here. Let's think of some of the balls that I have in the air right now that I'm juggling. I'm juggling my one-to-one -one client mentorships. That's my primary work in the world. It's where I love working. It's very time and energy intensive, and it also provides the most financial stability for me as I then do the second thing in my business, which is making free material for the internet. And YouTube is probably my second biggest energy spend per week. I likewise have my private courses and building towards more private courses and curriculum in the future with paid self-paced work. So that's a third lane. I have all my business back end in terms of things like responding to people, business structures, meetings with my accountant, legal things, business things, the dry bureaucratic aspect of doing this work. I have my research lane, reading new books and then rereading the books. I have, um, what else do I have? I have my social media outreach, which is responding to comments and messaging people over on Instagram, which I do for a fair number of hours per week. I like talking to people. And this is just to throw up a few things in the air at once. There's many different aspects of running even a very simple business like mine, where seemingly perhaps if you just watch my videos, like, oh yeah, Jordan puts YouTube videos on the internet. I also have to do thumbnails and titles and plan out a video and also have strategies for multiple months in a row and figure out how to balance that against my client needs and figure out how to balance that against my research needs and time to be able to create different types of material, written material versus video material versus page material inside of a curriculum. It's not all the same thing. So I don't try and do it all on the same day. My ideal Tuesday is I make YouTube videos and that's it. On Tuesdays, I make YouTube videos. On Fridays, I work with clients and respond to social media. On Sundays, I do the same. There's different days in my week that I break up depending on the tasks I need. And occasionally I'll have a admin day, for example, I'll have a Monday or Wednesday admin day, and that'll be a variety of small things I need to take off, but I don't try and do those on a day where I'm creating and I don't try and do all that on a day where I need to be present and focused with a client who's going through a complex or sensitive challenge. It doesn't work. Today's questioner was saying that they're feeling burnt out, not because they're working too much, but because they hadn't actually properly segmented or structured their time. So I imagine they're in a situation where they're swapping from task to task and their consciousness goes from very high state, very quick decision making to very mundane admin things to then maybe visionary things and shifting around throughout a single day. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You will go slower and you will make less progress and you'll feel more anxious if you don't properly segment your days. If you're not like me and you can't block out an entire day because you don't have the freedom to be able to choose your work routine, at the very least, I recommend that you break up based on the meals of the day.
For me personally, I don't usually have breakfast. I tend to fast for the first four, five, or six hours a day. I've done this for the last 10 years. It works really well for my focus. I like the fasted research period or creative period in the morning. And then after lunch, I do a different task if I need to. This means that in a single day, I'll have work chunk number A, which is four, five hours. I'll then have lunch. I'll then have another chunk. And then personally, I take naps on most days. That kind of breaks up the moment there. And then I'll have a final chunk in the day until dinner in the evening and maybe a bit more work after dinner. So I have three major chunks I work with segmented out throughout the days. The days are segmented within the week. And the wider perspective is also to segment out the quarters of your year so that you've got certain things you're focusing on. For example, the at the time of recording, I'm building out the business back end for my next level up in terms of online teaching and that's meaning things like establishing a framework for a newsletter establishing a framework for a new website establishing a framework for a new curriculum and also making sure that all the legals behind the scenes are sorted so i can just have it all dealt with to then be able to really unlock that next level of teaching but that means that my priority for these current months isn't making lots of youtube content and it isn't taking on loads of clients it's a different task so that filters down through into the weeks and then into the days you can have it all but just realize that the burnout if you're experiencing that burnout and you're experiencing the scattered focus is because you're trying to do too much in a single day or in a single week simplify simplify and restrict if you've got a reason to work a reason to care about yourself and build the boundaries don't try and do too many things at once try and find a way to just walk for one day or maybe if we're going to go with the metaphor of progressing down a road in the morning you walk, in the afternoon you crawl, and in the evening you sprint. Or sprinting in the morning, walking in the afternoon, and crawling in the evening, and then taking a nap beside the road when you need it. It's not a perfect metaphor, maybe unnecessary to go into that, but segment. Segment in a way that makes sense for you. If you've got your philosophical framework down, you'll then be able to implement the ideas in a way that truly lands, and that's as much as I can do for you in a single video. If you've got any particular tips that you can give anyone else, leave them down in the comment section, and I will try and expand, but primarily my interest would be towards the more existential reasons to work rather than the generic self-development, because honestly there's no reason for me to give you a work routine or productivity routine because I just don't do it. I don't do speed reading techniques, I don't structure out my day in Pomodoro techniques, I just do big chunks of four or five hours and know what I'm doing, so I get it done. I've got a reason to work, care about myself, and I split my day up into big, big chunks. That's it. I'll see you in the comment section. Hope you enjoyed the video.